Hey guys. So this is just a quick video. Well, I don't know about quick. We'll find out. Video about um, my current keyboard setup because I just feel like talking about it. So the first kind of obvious important thing is what keyboard am I dealing in? And I'm currently using the Ergodox Easy, which is something like this. I, pr I have like uh, no legend on my keys, so they're all just blank. And that's because I'm trying out different layouts and stuff. I also have it in white. That's not really that important. The most important things are it's split, so you have two separate hands. But the biggest reason I bought this keyboard is these thumb buttons. Because our thumbs are obviously some of our most powerful fingers. And it's really dumb that on most keyboards, you, you take two of your most powerful fingers and dedicate them to one single button. And as a gamer, I find that I never press space with my right thumb anyway. So my right thumb literally does nothing. And that just seems like a waste. So I got this keyboard because I thought, you know, let me just try out these thumb buttons. And uh, I'll uh, tell you exactly how that went. So for a while, I started with Dvorak instead of QWERTY as a layout. But more recently, I've switched to a new one. And I guess I'll first sort of give my opinion on Dvorak, which is, I think it's very good. Dvorak is a huge improvement over QWERTY. I was able to touch type in QWERTY at about like 80 words per minute, and it was fine. It just didn't feel good, you know? A lot of people will say switch to layouts for speed, or people will say don't switch for speed, and the latter is more correct. You can get fast at QWERTY, but the thing is QWERTY is designed to be good for typewriters so that it slows down the mechanism so it doesn't lock things up. But... Even at that, it's not that good because you can get very fast using QWERTY. And many people type over 100 words per minute using it. I personally, though, just don't find it very comfortable when you're typing. It just feels like your fingers are flying all over the board and it's like not very good. And that's why I went to Dvorak. And more recently, I, I got up to 80 words per minute in Dvorak. But I was just curious about other layouts. And I found this article, which I'll link in the description. And it just goes over a handful of different layouts. So you can see QWERTY, like the heat map of the most frequent keys, is sort of just all over the place. It's like nothing's really that good. And then this is Dvorak. And its uh, heat map is, you know, it's basically the whole idea of Dvorak was let's take the most used keys based on the English language and put them on the home row here so that you don't have to move your fingers as much. And it's pretty good. But there's a lot of things that weren't considered when making the Dvorak layout. The whole idea was minimize um, finger movement, basically. But there's more factors to a good typing experience than that. Then I looked into Colmac, and then very quickly went into Colmac DH. But I'll get into that in a moment. Colmac not only um, places good keys on the home row, just like Dvorak, but you can place them in a different way so that you can... There's two other sort of factors you need to care about. There is, you want to minimize how many times one finger will press like two keys in a row. So for example, uh, I guess I can look at QWERTY as an example. Like if you're typing the word deed in QWERTY, obviously if you're typing a word with two of the same letter, you have to press the key twice with the same finger. But deed on QWERTY is typed with the exact same finger. The whole word is with one finger. And so that's very slow. Because it's just physically harder to move one finger rather than just doing two almost simultaneously. So a layout like Colmac, deed, would be a lot easier. But you'll also notice your fingers are going to be pinky, um, ring finger, <laughs> middle finger, and index finger here. So D will have to be reached later by moving your index finger laterally. And the the problem is when Colmac was sort of designed, people basically said, well, it's on the home row and it's on the index finger, so they must be easy to hit. But honestly, I find like pinky finger home row easier to hit than index finger lateral movement. And a lot of other people agree with that. That lateral index finger movement is a big challenge. And so uh, Colmac and DH was born, where people basically said, okay, D and H are very well used, let's move them down where it's easier to hit them and move some keys around. And I started learning this a little bit. It was not too bad. 
But then I came to this article and I found some interesting things because I was thinking about, yeah, that lateral motion really sucks, but all of these keys are still here. And then there's all these other layouts, and then I found Engram, or Engram, I suppose, and it has an interesting approach where it doesn't... One of the benefits of Colmac is that it keeps a lot of the QWERTY keys in the same place, so you don't have to change them. But for me, I don't care about that. That doesn't matter to me. I, I already learned Dvorak, which is completely different anyway. So this is an interesting layout because it puts all the punctuation on that lateral uh, column. And so you don't actually have letters there. Now you do have two extra letters over here. But I'll get into that in a moment. But the cool thing about Engram is that it's based on rolling your hand. So, for example, you'll see the word you in here, or the word by in here. So typing those is as simple as just rolling your fingers over them. And it's very similar to Dvorak on this uh, home row over here, where you have H, T, S, and N. S and N are backwards compared to Dvorak. What that means is if you're typing, like, TH, you just roll from there, or SH, you just roll. And while it's not ideal, because, of course, no layout can be perfect, I just thought, let me give it a try. And so given that I have an Ergodox, uh, ZSA has, is so cool because it, allow, it has this online configurator where you can uh, customize your layout. But not only that, they have this new program where you can actively see what keys you're pressing on the keyboard. And so this makes it very easy to have a video. Now, the first thing you'll notice is, well, I actually don't know. There's a few things. Firstly, I have no punctuation here and I move Z and Q here. There's actually so much to talk about, but I'll start with this. Uh, I originally had Z and Q over here, sort of like um, the official layout would have, Z and Q here. But I just find that because I've already decided my punctuation is on a different layer, and I'll get into what that means in a moment, but obviously I have no punctuation here. So I decided, well, Z and Q are like, you don't press them very often, so it doesn't really matter where they are. Although, that's true for typing. For um, control shortcuts, for example, control Z for undo is very useful, or control Z in the terminal to suspend a program, or Q for like exiting in Vim. That's those are actually pretty useful. So I I decided instead of having to reach over really weirdly to press these keys, I would just move them in here. And then of course I have a choice: where do I put Z and where do I put Q? Obviously, I decided to put Q here because U is up here. And the most often times that you're going to be pressing Q in a word, you're going to be pressing U. So if I had to put U here and then, or if I had to put Q here and then U, I'd be pressing them with the same finger and that's just inefficient. So I decided Q here, U here, because you're not going to be typing like ZA or ZU very often, maybe on occasion, but not really that often. Maybe like jazzy, I guess. But that's that's not too big of a deal. It's so infrequent, it doesn't really matter. Whereas QU, almost any time you're using Q, it's going to be followed by a U in a word. So that's the idea of putting it here, because I think even though the lateral index finger motion sucks, I think it's better than the far reach of a pinky over here, because it's just... The pinky just doesn't have nearly as much like stamina to repeatedly press them. Whether that matters or not it's also just like mentally it just feels weird to reach past v and n now you'll also notice all of these keys i have are like completely empty i don't have like an enter and a backspace here i have my function keys but i have no numbers well that's because i decided to do something unique with layers you will also notice my escape down here i really love that escape the reason i put it here is because this key is easy to reach with the index finger or the thumb. I can use either my thumb or the index key. And same thing for this one. Control space, of course, is useful in some applications if you're dealing in coding or just other things they can be useful. So the first sort of layer I guess to talk about is this button down here. If I press it, it's essentially a shift key. And in Dvorak, it literally was a shift key. But it's actually a custom layer now. And I'll get into that in a moment, but you can just see it literally just shifts every single key that I could possibly ever want shifted on that layer. Next, let's talk about this thumb button. On this one, I only need one shift, realistically, because I can just press shift and just type letters. 
right? And then I can let go. It's not a big deal. So I don't need two shifts. I could have two shifts, but that's just, I find the idea of having two shifts annoying. Even when I had touch, when I was touch typing on a normal keyboard, I almost always only pressed left shift on like the left finger, but that's really annoying when you're typing like any of these letters. So I decided, let me just put it on my thumb. Let my right thumb actually do something for once. The next layer, I suppose, uh, there's also obviously like volume controls. It's not that important. There's some other layer stuff. I guess I'll just talk about what this button does. If I press this, it creates a layer that has nothing but a reset button. And the whole point of the reset button is when you flash new firmware, which is like a new layout, for example, then I have to reset the board and then it will flash. There's a physical button, but I find the software button more reliable and just safer or just more convenient. The next layer I want to talk about is this one, which is my number layer. So you'll notice, uh, I suppose I'll look back at Engram. You'll see they have custom punctuation and shifting behavior. So one, instead of having an exclamation mark, has the, the vertical bar and two has an equals. The reason for this is because, well, the vertical bar looks a lot like one and two. Well, that's two lines and that's sort of like, um, yeah, it's just, it's two lines, three, uh, just a squiggly four has a plus because a plus has like four quadrants, five and six. You just have these brackets. Seven has this, uh, Chevron, I suppose it's carrot because it's sort of sharp, like a seven, eight and ampersand. They kind of look alike. Nine percent kind of look alike zero and start kind of look alike. You put your slashes together, you have hash and dollar sign. This is kind of cool, I really like. So they put, uh, obviously, even the punctuation has optimal locations. You're going to be pressing period a lot more than you're going to be pressing things like question marks. So they put the period on the home row. And if you shift it, you get a colon. They put the comma, oh, this is inaccurate, but if you put a comma here, and if you shift it, you get a semicolon. That's not drawn correctly, but that's supposed to be a semicolon. Which is cool, because it's sort of like, okay, you have a comma and you have a period. If you shift it, it just throws a dot above it. That's nice. Then you have quote and double quote as two separate things, which is kind of nice as a programmer to just have a quote button instead of having to shift the single quote. And then if you shift them, you get parentheses, because parentheses are used very often. And then you have your minus or dash, and you have an underscore, and then you have... I love this. You have question mark, and if you shift it, you get an exclamation mark. That's awesome. I love that. I love that that's just like conceptually it makes sense that they're paired together. Whereas before it's like a slash and a question mark. It's like, really? Then you have your brackets as usual. They put them up here. But, of course, I have this custom layout. So I said, I don't want to really use this column for much. So let me change up my numbers. Previously, I had the whole number row on the whole home row, but again, I decided, let me curl it down so that I don't have to press this button. It's essentially the Colmec DH mod, but with the numbers. Also, apologies if my voice sounds a little weird. It's because I'm just a little bit sick right now. So, just like Engram's normal layout, I decided, well, periods and call um, commas should be index finger, right? Because they're the most frequently used ones. But instead of putting them down here, I put them up here because that's more useful for me to reach. And then, of course, I go outward where the second most used is going to be these or these. And I find this is more easy to reach, so I prioritize them. And I put quote and double quote here, and then I put dash and question mark here, and then the brackets on that side. And then I just threw in at and hash over here just because they need to go in somewhere. And then I kept slash in the same location that I basically always kept it, which is just the bottom right pinky. And of course I have room for other symbols if I feel the need to add them. But you'll also notice the sort of layer logic. If I press this shift key, you'll notice over here that this changes from layer three to layer four. Okay, and if I press this key, you'll notice this one changed from layer two to four. Well, what's layer four? If you press either combination of these, you get the shifted symbols. And so what you have here are things like, well, literally, it's just the custom shift layer. So like I said, you have commas up here. If you shift it, you have semicolons. You have a period over here. You shift it, you get a colon. 
and you get all of those symbols custom just like they have it laid out. The only issue I have with this so far, so you'll notice I had to put a a uh, a trigger basically for the layer when I'm pressing when I'm on layer two, and you can see the current layer in the bottom if you need to assist. If I'm on layer two, then I need to add I need to replace this button to bring it to layer four, and if I'm on layer three, I need to replace this button to bring it to layer four. That's all well and good, and you see if I let go of this, it's fine. If I let go of this one. It doesn't bring me to layer two. It just keeps me here. I ideally don't want this because, you know, suppose you're typing capital letters and then you want to type like a plus symbol. And then you want to start typing numbers immediately. You can't. You have to let go and press again. Most of the time, I find that this just isn't an issue, but it's just something to consider. Of course, I have my space bar exactly there. I have a screenshot button. And I threw in these buttons just to sort of have I have a right shift here just in case I need a real shift key and then I have you know just the windows keys this one's a left this one's a right doesn't really matter left control being here is actually super useful because I like to in the terminal I like to work in NeoVim and then I like to do control Z to get back to the terminal and then you can type FG to go back or I have a custom script that lets me press F uh, control Z again to go back into the thing. I have control and I have alt and then of course while well, pressing control and alt would be a huge pain if all of these are thumb buttons so I just have a control alt button in case I ever need it. I don't think I've ever used it honestly. I've barely used the alt key either but I have it in case I need it and I can always quickly change the layout and flash it. Um, there's only sort of a few more layers to talk about. This thumb button, which is the main right thumb button, is my navigation layer, and I love this. So, like I mentioned, I use Vim, but Vim, you need to use what? H, J, K, L? Well, these are all kind of in weird positions on this layout. But I don't use that navigation style for Vim. Now, I do agree. On a QWERTY layout, H, J, K, L is vastly superior to moving your hand down to type on the arrow keys. But notice, I don't have arrow keys. And obviously, I don't have HJKL here. My big problem with HJKL on QWERTY is it's it would be HJKL. It's shifted. So, so in order to press H, which in my case would be Q, you have to do a lateral index finger motion, which we've described here is not ideal. HJKL. If it was uh, JKL semicolon on QWERTY, I think that would be way better. But even then, it's still better than the arrow keys. But even better than that, I find, if I press my thumb button, you'll notice, well, there's all sorts of stuff that just popped up. The biggest thing, I have arrow keys over here. And notice, like I said, I'm a gamer. It's in a WASD formation, but it's not where WASD would be. It's shifted over one. The reason for that is, A is the like anchor point of the left hand home row for me. This would be what F on QWERTY. So um, what this means is I don't have to move my hand. I can just press this button and now I have arrow keys. Just as easy as I have them in QWERTY or I mean as I have them as WASD. I already have muscle memory for WASD. But now it's shifted over one. I don't have to move my hand. I press a button and I have WASD right here to move around. I think this is vastly superior to HJKL for me because I actually have the up key above the down key, which is exactly what I'm expecting if I'm using the arrow keys or WASD. But like I've mentioned, it's shifted, so I don't have to move my hand. I have to move my index, my uh, middle finger to go up and down, but I prefer that to doing what? Like these, where one of these, I don't know which one is up and one of them's down. I think this one's up, but it's arbitrary, right? This one just as easily could be up. It's completely arbitrary. Left, right, well, they're on the same level. This one, it's obvious. You go up to go up and down to go down. Now I have Alt up and Alt down over here, and that's useful because in a lot of editors, including my NeoVim uh, config, I have a key map for this, it allows you to move the line that you're on up one or down one. I moved home and end here, 
because home i might some of you might not even know but home brings you to the the start of the line on the left if you're typing and n brings you to the end of the line i didn't really use that because on normal keyboards it's like somewhere over here on like a function button and don't get me started on how function buttons on most keyboards are just in awful places for typing Hence why I got these thumb buttons for it. And then page up, page down if I just want a quick jump. And then I just have these do nothing. I still have my function keys if I want them. But the right hand side was one of the best accidents of this layout. I was just messing around, thinking of different things. I was like, okay, do I put like enter, backspace, like tab? Where do I put these things? And I thought, well, I'd really like to... I had a previous keyboard that had a function button somewhere like here ish and then you would have wasd as arrows so i thought let me mimic that but let me shift it over so i don't have to you know move my hand so it's more efficient and i thought well there's nothing on the right hand here Ooh, what if i took what if i took all of those fancy keys like enter and backspace and stuff and put them on the home row so now to press enter i just do this and then it's the anchor key for like my right hand i can press enter and then i can press tab and then I can press delete in backspace. No longer. On so many keyboards, backspace is like such an important key and delete is just like thrown off to the side as this unimportant key. Here, delete has as much like weight to it as backspace does. And yet backspace is still on my pinky so I don't have to really learn a new muscle memory. It's just in an easier location because I literally don't have to move my pinky. I just have to press thumb. Now I can actually use delete and backspace the way they're meant to be used because they're next to each other. It's not like it's not like backspace is here and then oh press this layer and go down here for delete. It's like so many keyboards are just designed so poorly. And then of course I have shift I've shifted things because if this thumb button is a shift, then if I'm on this layer I can't very well press that. I mean I kind of can, but it's weird. So I said, "Well, I have plenty of room. Let's do the shift buttons because, you know, shift enter is useful if you want to get a new line without sending a message." Shift tab is super useful if you're trying to like navigate tabs. And then I threw shift delete and shift backspace in there just in case I ever needed them, right? I don't use them, but they're there. And then of course I have alt enter, alt tab, <laughs> and you can see that works. Alt delete and alt backspace just in case. And like this layer is so useful. And that's why I put it on my main thumb instead of the shift key because I just use it all the time. If I make a typo, I just backspace. Very easy. If I want a new line, I ta I just press enter. If I want a tab, I just tab. If I want a shift tab, I shift tab. Like, if I want to move over, I move over and delete. Like, it's just so efficient. Like, not only is it so easy because I just have one thumb button to press. Mind you, a thumb button that's not doing anything else. Some people will get this keyboard and put two uh, space buttons. I just don't need that. I only ever press space with my left thumb it would just be a wasted key so i made this beautiful layer and i love this layer this is one of my favorite things of this whole keyboard is just having these arrow keys on the home row essentially and having these massively important keys on the home row because these are such important keys that you're always pressing and they're just like they're delegated to the pinky and delete is just like often a second thought on most keyboards it's not even given a proper place so this is just brilliant. I, I love this. And this was mostly an accident, like I mentioned. I didn't really plan for this. I just said, well, let me just try putting it on the home row because I'll make it more efficient. And I'm like, yeah, this, is, this feels so natural and awesome. Now, there's only two other things to really talk about. The boring one in the top right. If I press this, it just gives me Dvorak. This, oh, I, I didn't change that. That's fine. Um, it doesn't matter. But this is just because as I'm learning this layout, I wanted access to Dvorak. I'm at the point now where in my new layout, I'm like 40 words per minute. And in Dvorak, I'm like 30 words per minute because I haven't been using it. Ideally, I'd like to keep multiple layouts, but really, I might... What I should do, I think, is I'll stick with this layout if I really enjoy it. And then maybe at some point, I'll learn QWERTY again and just try and use both. Just so I can use normal keyboards like a normal human. But like, I don't know, it doesn't really matter as long as I have my keyboard. So this is just the Dvorak layer. There's nothing special about it. If I press this one, though, and notice I only have to tap it once to switch layer. I don't hold it. This gives me QWERTY for the most part. But this layer is not designed for typing. It's designed for gaming, which is why it's called gaming. 
and you'll notice I put a lot of normal keys back. I put tab back here. I put uh, shift control. I throw an alt down here in case I want it because it's in like a re reasonable location. And I have all my buttons for games. Now, something I recently realized is I can press this like number layer in games to get access to numbers because numbers are useful for like switching weapons or switching your inventory, for example. So I've seen people have layouts where instead of having like a number row, they have like a numpad. And that's totally valid. I definitely understand that. I've just never been a numpad kind of guy. I've always been a number row kind of guy. So that's why I opted for this layout instead of like just putting a numpad in. But if you wanted to customize this layout, for example, while well, my throat is really breaking, you'd be able to put in a numpad if you wanted to. So I guess I'll quickly wrap this up. I have my WASD gaming layer here. I threw an F13 just in case uh, I want to remap this key for anything useful. But you see, instead of layer 3, it's layer 6. And layer 6 is just a simple numpad centered around WASD because obviously that's where my fingers are going to be. So if I want my numbers, I can press this layer. And not only do I have numbers like 1 to 5, I have all of the numbers. And that would be useful for a game like Minecraft where you can switch to your hotbar by pressing like 8 or 9. But you never realistically do that because 8 and 9 are like over there. But now, if I wanted to, I could. And it's like not even hard to reach them because I could just press this. So yeah, overall, that's my current keyboard layout and that's sort of the ideas behind it. Escaping here is lovely instead of in the top left, especially for Vim, but also just generally it's like super useful. So I'm going to be learning this layout. I'm going to be trying to get fast at it. I guess one other thing I can sort of just show. Wow, my, my throat. I hope it's not too bad to listen to. Let me open a uh, numpad. No, not numpad. Um, what's the word? Notepad. That's that's the application. How oh, good it is untitled. If I put this up here, no, I sort of want. I want to put this on like the bottom half of the screen. Uh. Well, of course they didn't think of that. That's fine. I guess I'll do this. Uh, that's on my second monitor. Oh boy, Windows 11, huh? It's not too bad though. Okay. I sort of want this visible. Actually, I guess I'll shrink that so it fits. There we go. Just so you can sort of see how I'm typing. So the real benefits, as I mentioned, of this layout are rolling. When I type well, a word like youth, like that is so easy because it's not, it's not like five key presses. It's not like, it's three rolls. It's you, th, you, th. So like typing that, obviously you can still mess it up, is really fast and easy because it's just rolls. Typing the word by, it's a little hard because it's on the pinky, and you can already see, like, the way I'm just switching layers to type, because I'm so used to it, especially that one. It's just really easy, and I, I recognize that this text is probably really small, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I guess I'll do one more. Why not? Or two. Um, obviously in the least efficient way possible. I could just uh, control plus. I guess here I'd have to do like this. It'd be kind of weird, but I could I can do it, but whatever. So now let me get rid of all of this. Oh, and here. Uh, this is what I meant by home and end, if you don't know. Super useful. But often home and end are just thrown somewhere over here in the keyboard, and it's like, why? So typing a word, typing like sh, the... Those are really easy. There's The thing is, you don't really know all of them, but you sort of discover them as you type. My biggest sort of gripe, I'd say, is E and O. The problem is a word like people, uh, people, requires you to type P-E-O with the same finger, but that's okay. You're never going to have a layout that's optimal. Gray Z. I suppose that's where you'd have an A and then a Z, which is fine. It's so infrequent. Um, I don't really have any great examples, but I guess like E and A being next to each other is awesome because a word like read, you press R, E, A as like one roll and then D. Oh, well, I, I thought of another great example. Could, for example, 
not could or should. So think about should. It's SH, which is a role, OU, which is a role, and then LD, which is a role. So it's just, and I'm still learning it, so I'm not very good, but it's just, you just roll from like SH and then all the way over. I think it's very simple. And that's true for could as well. And if you get actually good at typing, you'll prepare the role before you even type it. But like I said, I've only been doing this for like less than a week, so I'm only like 40 words a minute. Uh, there's like, it's hard to think of them off the top of your head, but there's a lot of sort of um, things that just sort of happen. And yeah, all in all, it's sort of just as you type, you experience like, huh, that was very fluid and like, it felt very good to type. And the Forex a good layer and all. I don't dislike it, but you don't really have these roles. You, like, maybe you have S and H, because uh, notice, basically all four of these are the same. It's just S and N are swapped. So you have, like, SH and, and like, st and TH. Those are nice, but you don't really have more. Like, typing U is, you have to laterally move up here, and then U. It just doesn't feel as good because you're using like the index finger twice. You th it's like okay. Ma ni. That's that's right. That's the wrong button. Okay. I guess I was pressing it in the other again, that's the problem, is like you, you start to remember keys as different ones. But like it just it feels better to type on. And ultimately that matters. I would say Going from Dvorak to a layer like Engram or Colmac DH, it's probably just not worth it for most people. I'm just kind of crazy, so I don't mind rewiring my brain over the course of a month to learn a new layout, especially considering I'm a programmer. So I, I literally, most of my time, I'm typing. So typing comfortably is nice. What I would recommend for most people, if you don't know how to touch type and you don't use a computer very often, that's probably whatever. If you use a computer kind of often, maybe learn to touch type in QWERTY. It's not a big deal. It will help a lot, though. If you're more of a proficient computer user, someone who actually writes a lot, I'd recommend... Um, Dvorak is good because it's supported straight in Windows. You just have to go into settings and add a new English layer. But realistically, the best layout, I would say, for most people, if they were looking for a layout other than QWERTY, would probably be Colmac DH. Because it keeps a lot of the keys in the same location as uh, QWERTY. So you see QWs there. You have your shortcuts over here. They did have to move V to put D in the better location. But you have a lot of keys that are in similar locations. But it's still a better layout than QWERTY actually getting this to work on your system. I have no idea how you're going to do that. Good luck, but that would be my recommendation. I'd also recommend uh, a website called Typing Club. They're very good for learning uh, touch typing. Not sponsored or anything. I just really enjoy them. They have they have a, a program for, obviously, QWERTY. They have a many. They have one for Dvorak, and they have one for normal Colmac. But you can basically apply this to any of them. It's not a big deal. So anyway, I think this is about as much as my throat can take, and I think we've reached the natural sort of conclusion of the video anyway. I'll link both of these things in the description, and I'll even link my layout, because the cool thing about this is if you have an Ergodox Easy, you could just download the layout and then flash it to your board and check it out if you feel the need. And as you can see, here's all the layouts actually separated. But, you know, it it's, looks more confusing than it actually is once you learn what it all is. But hopefully, hopefully at the minimum, this is just giving you some ideas about different layouts that you could have on a keyboard. Hopefully it makes you question why so many keyboards are just designed like trash for typing. And even if you type in QWERTY for the rest of your life, you know, good for you. Just do it comfortably and try and get reasonably quick enough for the things that you do on it. Right? Not everybody needs to type at 90 words a minute, but if you could type 40 words per minute and you'd send an email every now and then, then that's good enough, honestly.
we all have professions and we all have our tools. As a programmer, this is my tool, and that's why I take all the time to nitpick tiny little details like where Z and Q are. But hopefully this was interesting and you enjoyed it. See you guys in the next video.